Hey everyone, Brandon here on board a beautiful aluminum hulled boat. Just mounted the barnacle. First, what we're gonna do is uh, connect to ground. So we've got a ground bar down here. We're gonna connect it into pin 14 or into pin one of the barnacle connector. And what we wanna do to power up the barnacle initially is to connect it to a 12 or 24 volt power source that's on 24 hours, that's unswitched ideally. And uh, thankfully this one has a 24 hour panel right here. So we'll be able to add a three amp fuse on board this 12 or 24 volt panel and connect it into pin 10 on the base of the barnacle. And that's our battery one input. So that will actually get our barnacle powered up and transmitting its first data to the cloud and into the app. All right, so we've got power and ground connected now into the base of the barnacle. What we'll do next is add the GPS antenna. Now the GPS antenna will connect to the outermost antenna port on here. So we have two ports, an auxiliary and uh, the GPS port. So you'll simply take the one that's supplied in the packaging with the barnacle, connect it up, and then you will take the actual GPS antenna and place it somewhere close to the hull. And since we're on an aluminum hull boat, we want to actually run this to a location close to a window. Now it doesn't need perfect line of sight if you're in a fiberglass boat, such as a, a sailboat or a small power boat or even a large power boat. As long as it's close to the fiberglass, you'll be all good. Um, but in an aluminum hull boat, getting a line of sight of the sky is ideal. So now we're gonna be installing the bilge monitoring onto the barnacle. And what we have here is our actual auto manual switches for these bilge pumps. There are four bilge pumps on here and uh, it's always left in the auto mode. And now with an automatic uh, bilge pump, there's a float switch inside of the bilge pump. And when that float switch is triggered, you're actually gonna see 12 or 24 volts on the manual line of that bilge. So when connecting a barnacle to an automatic float switch or to an automatic bilge pump, you will actually be able to just connect at the switches here. So for example, this one here, you can manually cycle the bilge pump and see a red light come on. Now, if we go into the back behind this panel, we'd actually be able to find where that manual line is connected. And you'll see that it goes from zero volts to 12 volts when that button is pressed. And that's what we're gonna connect into the barnacle to sense when the bilge pump's running. Now, if we actually went to the bilge pump and filled the area with water, that automatic float switch would trigger and you would see a red light over here as well. So that manual line is always gonna to go to 12 or 24 volts when that bilge pump is running, which is what we'd like to monitor with the barnacle. All right, so now we're gonna flip the manual switch on the bilge pump and we'll be able to see at this line that it goes from zero volts to 12 volts. So go ahead. Now we're up to 12.87 volts. So that's the manual line on the bilge pump that we're triggering. And now in here, you'll notice that this isn't standard coloring for the wiring. What you would normally see is brown and brown with a white stripe. Typically what you'd see is the brown wire would be connected to the manual. But in this case, and if on your boat you have different colored wires as well, you'd be able to uh, just use a voltmeter very simply and just check for that voltage change. And now what we're gonna do is splice this line, which we've confirmed is the manual line, and run it down to the barnacle. In order to monitor additional bilge pumps on this boat, we want to connect to the digital inputs on the barnacle. And those digital inputs are switching ground. And a bilge pump would normally be switching on 12 volts. So what we did was we added our DC relays, which can be purchased off the barnacle website or at one of your local retailers. And once you connect in that DC relay, you're connecting the DC relay to a common ground and the input into the DC relay will be the 12 volts that's switching up and down from the bilge pump. The output, the normally opened output from the relay will go into the barnacle. And then that way, when the 12 volts goes high and low, the relay is actually switching that common ground, which is then run into a digital input in the barnacle. Uh, the input into the barnacle can then be configured uh, through the barnacle app to be named as bilge and the high level can be named as pumping and the low name can be okay. The shore power connection is really important because when the shore power is disconnected you're now charging your batteries based off of your alternator 
maybe solar panels or other power source on board the vessel. Could be a generator as well. So what we want to do is find the AC panel on board the vessel and you're going to be connecting the shore power hardwired transformer behind this panel and you're going to want to pick a spot on here that's non-switched. So you don't want to be able to turn off one of these switches and then have your shore power be seen as disconnected by the barnacle. So typically you'll wire it directly to the AC main or directly from the plug that would be coming into your boat and uh, connecting it line and neutral directly to the shore power transformer. Now in North America, it's expected that uh, line and neutral will be black and white, line being black and neutral being white. So be sure to keep an eye out for that uh, when you're back there and make sure that everything's disconnected when you're working with AC power. So we are just finishing up the installation here and the last piece is connecting the camera to the barnacle. So the camera connection is at the top. This is also the same location where you would plug in one of the barnacle mate accessories as well, which adds the wireless sensors. But in this case, we're just adding the camera and the camera cable can be spliced. So you can see here, we've actually cut the cable that allows you to have a one inch or sorry, a quarter inch hole drilled anywhere where you want to run the cable through. In this case, we didn't have to drill any holes, which was really nice, but um, otherwise you'd have to drill a much larger hole to get the connector through. So uh, splicing the camera cable, you can cut it and then just rejoin it. And uh, you can have up to 300 feet of cable in between. And uh, it's four wire, so just use butt splices and a four conductor cable if possible.